And as it inevitably happened, someone went ahead and entered in uh, the <laughs> game code as their name. And I will go ahead and accept. And yes, I realize that you are able to see the questions as they pop up. Um, if you're doing this with your students and you didn't want them to see all the answers, um, you could just simply uh, turn off your projector because typically what you see on my screen is what you'd have on the projector. Um, so what I've done in the past when I've done this is I, I would just turn off my projector um, or hit the blank button so they can't see what I'm approving or, or rejecting just in case somebody sits, submits something that's not appropriate. Um, you can go ahead and reject that. So you can see right now, um, Corey submitted a question. Uh, it's perfectly fine. I would just hit add. But if it was inappropriate or wrong for some reason, you can go ahead and hit reject. What happens then is Corey would have on his screen, it would pop up and say um, that the presenter had rejected your question. And it would ask Corey to go ahead and resubmit a different question. So students, if they do make a mistake or do something inappropriate, have a chance to correct that and submit something um, that fits better for what you're supposed to be doing. Banning Steak Park, love it. Whoever I missed who submitted that question. Captain Crunch is real name. All right, whatever, I'll trust you, you right? Yes? Um, that was me that with the Banning Steak Park one. Oh, it was a good one. My cross country kids run there every day, it seems like. Yeah, I, if I was closer, I would too, for sure. That's awesome. So you can see all the people that are in red are people that have joined us but haven't submitted a question. Um, I can start the game at any point, uh, but obviously it's best if you uh, wait until everybody submits a question. Um, and you see there's a couple more people that have uh, submitted. Um, and again, I once you've submitted your question, you again have that opportunity to go ahead and um, use that uh, whiteboard function to draw a picture while you're waiting. Again, his kids something to do while they're waiting on everybody else. Sometimes I have my kids um, play tic-tac-toe with each other, hangman or something while they're waiting. Um, especially if you're doing something like this with a kit collab where it takes a little more time to get started uh, because everyone obviously is submitting questions um, as opposed to just entering the code and joining. I'll give people a couple more minutes here to finish up their questions. I'll give you two minutes. We'll set the timer. So again, uh, the five people that are still read, if you could please come up with a question. Question can be anything you want. It can be local trivia. It can be stuff from your uh, class that you teach, content that you teach in the classroom, or it can just be a funny riddle or whatever. It doesn't matter at all what your question is. Ooh, Interstate State Park, also a great, great state park. Um, I recently, with the whole COVID situation, my family has uh, done a lot of uh, visiting state parks. Uh, in fact, we made it a weekly thing where we would, um, don't tell my principal, play hooky on school and uh, go to a state park um, with the kids and it was an awesome experience and we saw a lot of cool stuff in a lot of different uh, state parks interstate and banning probably were my top two my wife did not like interstate state park um, especially the cliffs um, she at one point in fact started crying because me and the kids were looking over an edge that was uh, pretty substantial it was a long ways down uh, to the river bottom and um, it did not make her feel comfortable at all even though we were not that in any danger of any sort but um, heights are not her thing so um, last call for those of you that haven't submitted a question yet if you could please submit a question um, for this game that would be great um, it can be any kind of question that you want it does not matter and we will start the game
Okay, so I'm going to start the game. If you haven't submitted a question, I'm sorry that you didn't get a chance to do that, but you should still be able to play the game. I set the time limit for a little bit longer this time so we can get a little more into the game. Um, so we have 12 minutes to play the game this time as opposed to only, I think we played it for six time, six minutes last time. So um, lots of time. Remember, um, best way to win this game is once you have 10 or more dollars, just go to that shop and spend that money and purchase those upgrades. See people already purchasing some upgrades, which is, a gr again, a great idea. Um, one thing I didn't see people doing uh, when we played earlier, and that's probably because we only played for six minutes, is that in the shop at the bottom, uh, you have the option to go to power-ups as well. And there's a bunch of different power-ups that you can purchase that will um, help you, or you can use uh, some of them which will uh, harm or hurt other people that are in the game. So if you have a, a arch nemesis that's playing right now uh maybe someone that works in your building down the hall or maybe you just want to knock Corey off the top spot um you can purchase uh different power-ups to help or hurt you and other people um there's also themes um that you can buy to change the color scheme uh to what you're looking at They're, they go for as little as five dollars all the way up to uh like a hundred one billion dollars i believe for pure gold uh, we probably won't have enough time to get that much money.
All right, Jenna iced Corey. That's the first person I've seen that used a power up uh, to ice someone means that um, they're not able to answer any questions. I want to say for 15 seconds. Um, so it gives them a little bit of a freeze cooldown time. So uh, good job using your power ups, Jenna. Sorry, Corey. This is your two minute warning. We have two minutes left in this game to get as high up on the leaderboard as you can. So use your time wisely. Hey, we hit a million dollars. Good job, everybody. Thank you. 
And in third place, we had Mindy. In second place was player 62858. And in first place was the one and only Damian Fish with $1.5 million. Congratulations to everybody that made the top of the leaderboard. Good job. You see the rest of the top 10 on the screen there. Good job, everybody. All right. So, um, that's how a kit collab works. Um, it's kind of a fun way uh, to use it, to collaborate. Uh, my students, I use it uh, in particular when we're reviewing like a unit. Um, I have the students all make their own questions from the unit that we had been studying for the last few weeks and then we play it that way. Uh, it's a fun way to get the kids involved on a different level. Um, next thing I wanted to do is um, show you guys what it's like to um, kind of create an actual game kit. Um, so I'm going to go, let's see here, one moment here, get back to my, uh, I don't want to share, I want to present, I hit the wrong button. Okay, so, oh, before I get to that, um, so this game was created by uh, a high school student, actually. It was created back um, in 2017 uh, when this guy, his name's Josh, I forget his last name, um, he's a Seattle uh, area high school student. He was a junior in high school when he decided that he um, was sick of Kahoot and was sick of the other games that are out there and knew that he could make um, something better and something that students would like more um, because he was a student. He felt like his perspective that he could make something uh, that would be uh, a better learning experience for students. Um, Originally, the game, the reason why it's called Gim Kit is originally he named it Gim Lit, uh, like the drink, uh, but then he uh, made the wise decision later to change it to Gim Kit, so it's more school appropriate. Um, so um, that's how it was created, and that's um, kind of the history, I guess, on, on Gim Kit. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a very new game. It was uh, He came up with the idea in 2017, so it's only been around for a couple of years, um, and it's still very small. Uh, business, but it's gaining popularity. Um, so, like I said, teacher side of uh, Gim Kit, I will show you that now. So you'll see what it looks like. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> when you log on to Gim Kit. So, when you log on to Gim Kit, um, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to show your kits that you've created. This is the one we just created 33 minutes ago. I just titled it ECMAC. This is the one that we played earlier and all the other ones that I have. Um, it also allows you to have folders. So you can see over on the left hand side, I have folders of different uh, kits that I've created or found that I use uh, in my classroom. And for some reason I have two unit eight folders. Okay. So um, if you were new to GimKit and you were just starting out and you wanted to find something, of course, the first thing you'd want to do is search or the first thing I personally would do is search for a GimKit that someone already created so I don't have to recreate the way wheel. So as a math teacher, I'll do something uh, math related. So I'll search for one step equations. So this is something that we work on in seventh grade math, uh, solving one step equations. And look, I found one for a one step equation. Um, it's got a bunch of different uh, images you can see here. And it's, you know, saying what should this first step be? Looks perfect. If I were using, if I were teaching one step equations, this would be a great game for us to play. Um, all I'd have to do once I find this game that I like is go ahead and click on it. And once you click on it, if you need to do anything to it to change it, if you find some questions that are wrong or you want to just uh, add more or delete some, you can hit copy and that'll make a copy of it that'll save to your account. Because right now, uh, this a Andrew person is the 
creator, uh, but if I want to make my own copy, I hit copy. If I like how it is um, and I don't see anything wrong with it, I can just simply hit play, and that will <clears throat> generate um, the game itself. Um, yeah, there's a warning there that, you know, this is not my game, so I can't get a report after the fact, which is fine. It doesn't matter to me. I don't really do the reports. I do it more for just fun in-class activity. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do here. Um, classic mode is just a typical mode that most people play. There's a team mode as well. Team mode, I don't usually do. I like the classic mode. Um, you can do a time base so that all players make as much money as they can. You can set up for a race, so like the first person to hit a million dollars wins. Or you can do the all-in where um, <clears throat> all the players try to earn as much money as they can, but the game ends when the total team meets a certain goal. Like here, it's set up as two, $20 million. I usually do time. Um, that way I can set it up. You know, if I, I, I know how much time I have uh, devoted in class for it. Um, typically I'll do 10 to 15 minutes. Um, if you go shorter than 10, kids don't really get into it enough because you, it takes a while to start earning some serious money. If you do more than 15 minutes, it gets to be long and students, uh, or at least my middle school students, uh, their attention span wanes quite a bit. Um, you can connect it to your classes. You can see I'm still connected to my classes from last year. So the players, um, the players' names are already on there. They just type in the code, and then their names automatically are on the list, and they just select their name from the list. Um, you can give kids money to begin with if you want to give them some cash to start out with. Um, the handicap is the bottom uh, floor on how far you can go down. So kids are just randomly guessing or really don't get it. Um, you can't go below whatever that handicap is. Um, and then all these other options that you can turn on or off. Um, the clean power-ups, um, some people like that because um, you can't use any of the power-ups that hurt other people. So like some of you used like the ice or the blur or there's a subtractor and there's some other things that you can use to harm other people. Um, you can turn those off so that students don't do that if you feel like it wouldn't be appropriate for your class. My students love those things. They think they're the best um, and they they will do it back and forth at each other all the time. They like to freeze their buddies and then the buddies freeze them back and all that stuff. So I leave it on because I think it's all in good, good sport and good fun. But if you feel like it's not appropriate for your class, you can certainly turn those off. Uh, once you've done all, once you've done all the settings that you have it to how you want it, all you have to do is hit continue and you're ready to go. Um, one cool feature uh, that we have, and we're not going to play this game, so please don't bother entering the code. Um, one cool new feature that they just added uh, specifically for distance learning is you can send this your students this code on like Google Classroom or through email or whatever, and then you can add remote communication to the game. So you can connect it to a Zoom that you already have going. That way, when students join the GIM kit, they can have the option to also see the zoom which would be my screen so um the way that we played it we played it where i had you set it up as two uh different tabs or two different windows on your screen if you have a student that's playing that doesn't have that ability or maybe that's um, a little complicated for them you can just automatically have them join the zoom by doing this or you can have them watch a live youtube stream uh, of you or of your screen while they're playing. That way they can see the leaderboard and their questions all on one uh, window. They don't need to have two different windows open or two different devices or anything like that. Um, one thing that I have uh, noticed with this in my experimentations with it, I haven't done it with students yet, again, because it's new, it just came out like a week ago, <clears throat> is that the uh, remote communication part is only available if you're on a laptop or desktop computer. Um, it will not work with a phone. It will not work with a tablet or iPad. Um, so if you're going to do the remote communication part and have your students um, see your screen while they also are seeing their questions, um, they are going to have to be on a laptop, desktop. Um, does work? It does work on a Chromebook, so Chromebooks I uh, would work on. So that's kind of a new feature. Yep. So that's what it looks like to set it up uh, if you were going to just do one that someone else already created. Okay. Now, that's what I do the majority of the time because I, um, I have a lot of students that typically have three or more preps 
um, that I have to prepare for because I'm not only a, a seventh grade math teacher, but I teach uh, a lot of our coding classes at Malacca. Um, so <clears throat> I don't have time to go through and create my own stuff. So I usually go out, find something like this game that I just found, and I would use that um, or something similar to that um, where I see fit and where it's appropriate. Now, some of you are maybe a little more picky, and maybe you say to yourself, well, I want to make my own because I need it to be this way. Or maybe you have something specific that you, when you go in the search and you can't find uh, – a specific topic that you want to do that someone else hasn't created because to be honest game kit is much newer than a, a game like kahoot and because it's so much newer it's only been around for a couple of years um there's not as much stuff out there as you would find in like a kahoot because in a kahoot you can search for almost anything and you can find a kahoot that someone else has created that probably is going to fit for what you're looking for game kit that's not always the case if you have something specific you might need to make your own so to do that over on the right hand side you just simply hit new kit um you type a name and i'll just say test and you can choose a language and a subject i just have mine to english and other um you can search for a photo or you can just pick a photo they'll just They'll do a photo based off the words in your title. So mine was test, so you can see their students like taking a test. Um, so you can just pick whatever photo you want for your uh, cover. Doesn't matter, the students can't see it anyways. Now, there's a bunch of different ways that you can add questions. The, the standard way is just simply choosing to add a question. And this is just like what you guys did with the Kit Collab. You type in your question, you type in the correct answer, and you type in four or three, excuse me, incorrect answers. <clears throat> okay, so it's exactly like what you did with the kit collab, uh, nothing different there. One difference though you can do is we can add photos and you can also add audio in there. So if you have some audio or if you want to maybe read the question to your students, um, you have that opportunity. Um, another difference in this is compared to the kit collab you did before is you can also do a text input. So you, add, you ask a question and then they have to type in the correct answer. <clears throat> One thing to be careful with that is um, the spelling and punctuation matters, obviously. So if your answer is Minnesota, the students must type Minnesota correctly. They must spell it correctly. <clears throat> they must have the correct uh, capitalization, and it needs to be exactly correct and exactly how you type it. So um, if that works for you, great, do it. Um, if that doesn't work for you, don't do it. I, in math, honestly, I use that a lot um, just because in math, it's easy to just have a number answer. Um, so there's no worry for typos or misspelling or anything like that. So if I have a bunch of questions for math that I have um, that are just simply number answers, I'll do that. Um, that way the students can't just randomly, well, they can still randomly guess, but they can't just blindly choose one of the multiple choice. They need to stop and actually think about it um, before they uh, pick an answer. Okay, so that's how you just add a normal question. You can also create uh, with what's called flashcards. So you can do create flashcards just straight up. Um, so the way those work is you just type in a question and then you just type in the correct answer. You do not need to type in the incorrect answers because those are automatically generated for you by GimKit. Um, and the way that they do that is they will actually take other correct answers from your list of questions and answers, and they will use those as the incorrect answers on other questions. Um, this works really swell. Um, if you have all answers that are uh, unique and are different, um, so like in a math class, as long as all your answers have different numbers, um, this is perfectly fine, and then the incorrect answers will be the uh, other answers from other questions. Um, you do not want to do this if you're going to have the same answer, or if you're going to have like a bunch of true false questions or um, answers like if the number five comes up multiple times, you don't want that because then you'll have a question, you might have a question where they'll have a question, the answer will be five, but there'll be two fives on the uh, multiple choice and the students will have to pick the right one because one of them technically will be earmarked as correct, the other one will be marked by the game as incorrect. So. As long as your answer is all unique, uh, that's a good way to do it. Um, you can also import flashcards. Um, now, um, I don't know how deep into this you guys want to go. Um, have any? Oh, I never, I haven't checked. Okay, I'll come back to that. Um, so I don't know how familiar you guys are with um, 
quiz um, Quizlet. Uh, but Quizlet is a great website. Quizlet Live is another really fun game to play. If you haven't ever heard of it, you should test it out. It's totally free and uh, fun for students. Uh, but Quizlet is a, basically a flashcard website. They have tons of stuff. And they have way more stuff than um, what GimKit has. So if you're looking for something that you want to use, that you don't want to create it yourself, um, you can go to a place like Quizlet, and I'll give you an example here, and you can find a set of flashcards that you like, and once you add them to your list of flashcards, you can, sorry, I gotta scroll down a little bit here, you can export those, and you can actually just go down here and copy all this text, this is all the questions and answers, and you can go to your GIM kit and you can just go paste, and boom, there's all my questions and answers. I just made a GIM kit by copying and pasting all the stuff that I found over here on Quizlet. If you're familiar with Quizlet, even if you're not, it's super easy to do. Just just um, add it to your uh, collection on Quizlet, and then you can uh, export it like I did and copy and paste it. Now I just created a GIM kit um, with a bunch of questions, automatically generated wrong answers. It has the correct answer for each one. Um, and that's all you got to do. Okay. Um, you can do the kit collab. That's how I did it with you here. If you hit continue with kit collab, it'll go to the screen where it shows the game code. And then you guys can join the game and add in your own questions on top of what I already have. Or if you want to start with a blank slate and just only have the kids' questions, that's another option. Um, if you want to add from a question bank, um, you can go to other questions that you already have, like here's all the questions you guys created. If I wanted to add one of these, I can just um, hit the plus button right here, and that adds it into my game uh, here that I'm doing. Okay. Um, or if you happen to have a bunch of questions and answers on a spreadsheet, um, there's a way that you can do that. I've never personally done it this way because I don't have – uh, things on a spreadsheet like that for my classes. But if you have some, or maybe you have some uh, from a different site that you can um, export onto a spreadsheet and then you could import them into here, uh, that way you don't have to recreate the wheel and do it all. That would be another option for you. Um, and you can follow the instructions that they have here for you to do that. Okay. Once you're done, you simply hit finish kit. And now you can see it's on my list. I can just simply hit play live. And again, it'll generate that screen with the game code for students once I hit continue um, for all my settings and students can join. Okay, so uh, not too difficult if you've done things like Hoop before. It's pretty similar uh, in the amount of work and setup that it takes uh, to do that. Okay, so that's what it looks like from the teacher side. I know I covered a lot a lot of material uh but uh that's what it looks like um now gim kit just like everything else in the world on uh, you know nothing's as good as it sounds <laughs> gim kit there is a free option the basic account uh what you get is uh with that you get an unlimited number of kits of your own that you can create this is a new feature they added Previously, it was limited on the free accounts. Um, you can edit the kits as many times as you wish, which seems like an obvious no-brainer, but that's also another thing that they just added previously. You could only edit things one time, and then once you edit it, it was done, and you had to make a copy of it to edit it again, which was super cumbersome. Um, there's no app required uh, for you or your students, and as I mentioned before, there's built-in Zoom and YouTube Live uh, for desktop and laptop users. Um, some limitations. The the, the bad part about the basic account is um, they recently put on a limit of five players for a free account. So if you're going to play this with students, you only are allowed to have five devices join the game. Um, this is a very limiting feature. I am not at all happy that they did this. This is a new uh, limitation that they just added. Previously, it was unlimited. Um, their goal is to try to push people into the paid account, basically. Um, they're a small company. They want to. They need to make some money. They don't do advertisements. They don't sell data to any of the Google or any other companies. So the only way that they can generate revenue is uh, by people purchasing the pro account. Um, so this is how they're kind of trying to push people into that. Um, there's no 
uh, assignments as well. You can you can create a GIMP kit and make it be an assignment for students so that they, they don't have to play when you present it to them. They can join it at any time and they can do it for the set amount of time that you uh, prescribe and then it, it basically works as an assignment and you get a notification that they're done and you can see the report and you can see the results and you can see uh, what percentage they had correct and all that stuff. Um, there's also no kit collab on the free account. So like what we did earlier where you can um, have your students submit questions uh, to help you create a GIM kit. You can't do that with the basic free account. Uh, so there are some limitations to the free account. Um, Pricing for the pro account, um, it's four ninety nine a month, uh, which works out to be just under sixty dollars a year. Um, you get full access. Um, you can do uh, all the live games with as many people as you want. Um, as you saw earlier today, we had over a hundred people join the game that I had earlier because I'm on a pro account. Um, you can set assignments. You can do kit collab. Um, there's other game modes that they have. Um, Kim Kit is really creative with their game modes. They come out with different stuff. Uh, as recent as last week, they had a new game mode, or not a new game mode, but a game mode that they occasionally have, which is called Humans versus Zombies, where all the students in the class are labeled a human or zombie, and it's you basically it's a team game basically where it's la whatever team survives the longest wins. Super fun. They had another one, Thanos mode, when Aven when the last Avengers movie came out. That was another fun game. Um, so um, it's not horribly priced uh, at four ninety nine a month, uh, but I know teachers don't like to pay for stuff. Um, I know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to advertise this or anything, but, you know, I've heard of some departments paying for um, the pro account and then maybe all the department members just share the login information. Um, you know, I'm not going to promote anything like that, but, you know, uh, that could be an option. Everyone can have their own folder in the account, and there you go. Um, otherwise, uh, for larger schools or schools that have a lot of people that are looking to join it, if you have a lot of different uh, people, um, you can do the groups where you can do an entire school uh, for the whole year is $1,000. So as many students in your school or many teachers in your school as you want could all be on the account. Um, or you can just do the department, which is up to 20 teachers uh, for $650. So maybe, um, well, none of our schools are super huge, but uh, maybe you have a small group of, of teachers that are looking at joining. Um, so you would not pay for the whole school, but you could do the department deal and do that group pricing. Um, so those are your pricing again. Oh, one thing that they do have that is new is that they do have a free 30 day trial for the pro. So I would recommend um, if you like anything that you've seen it all here, um, don't start that trial now. Obviously we're a month away from school, but once school starts, uh, maybe start up that trial, log into GimKit, and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to start your 30-day trial. So don't log into GimKit now, or it'll start it automatically. But test it out. See if you like it. See if it's worth the money. Um, I personally think it is, uh, but that's up to, to you whether you think it's worth the $4.99 a month. Um, I want to thank everybody for sticking around all the way to the end. Um, hopefully um, you learned something in this presentation. Um, from me, I need to go back here to see if there's any questions. Um, so there's a way for a teacher to do all the questions. Okay. I covered that. I feel like, um, Nicole also gets afraid of kids. Okay. <laughs> Uh, there's a whole class. Um, Sarah, to answer your question, um, for the whole class thing, I don't know if that would really work for this. Um, I mean, I guess you could, and you could just join it. Um, you could start it up on, a, a, well, you start it on your computer and just join it on your own computer and just have one player in the game. And then you could have students come up to the board or show out their answers. You can select an answer on the Promethean. So, yeah, I guess that could work. You just have one person, though, um, in the game. But that certainly would work. Um, I don't see any other questions. Does anyone else have any questions or comments or anything for me? Feel free to turn your mic on or just post them in the in the chat. But 
otherwise, if you don't have any questions, um, I don't have any more stuff to cover for you. Um, so you, you can leave if you need to leave. If you got stuff to do, we got 15 minutes before the next round of sessions start. Um, if you all stick around for anyone that does have questions, um, feel free, like I said, to turn your mic on or just post it in the chat. Thank you to all of you that joined me. Hopefully you learned something and it was worth your time.